Good evening, everybody. Welcome to class. I'm Daryl Moore. I'm your instructor. I'm glad everybody's here and I uh, hope everybody gets settled in. We're going to have uh, a nice little evening. Uh, these sessions are, are set up to just kind of take the mystery out of uh, the class. Uh, I know that as a, a brand new student and brand new course, uh, there's a lot of anxiety and really um, our system is really straightforward. It's we're asking a lot of you, but what we're asking is not anything that um, should confuse you. We're just asking for your ideas. We're asking for your thoughts. We're asking you to participate, but um, we don't want there to be any mystery about what we're expecting of you and everything. So these sessions are just set up to um, help dispel all that and get you used to being here. Um, Full Sail is a different kind of school and I know you've heard a lot about the accelerated curriculum, but you don't know how fast classes go by until you really experience them. There's a, there's a real rock and roll rhythm in full sale classes and they, the four week class just happens very quickly. And uh, it takes some getting used to. And uh, part of what we're gonna do this month is ease you into that. So we're not gonna go as fast as a normal full sale class goes, but, um, uh, think of this as like an on-ramp to the expressway. By the end of the month, you'll be going pretty good. Um, I want to make sure, can everybody hear? Is everybody seeing the screen? Yeah, I can hear you and see the screen. All right. Yeah, I can hear you, Teach. Same, I can hear. Okay, so uh, things are going good. We're recording this. If anybody's having any trouble, we can come back and catch the recording. But what I want to do is just get you oriented to the full cell system talk about how things work, how, how the, uh, um, the uh, structure of the class goes, talk about the assignments, and actually go through the, the homework so it's very clear. At the end, I'm gonna dump out of these slides. We're looking, you're looking at my desktop right now. We're gonna have some slides. I'm gonna talk you through it, and then I'll just dump out of that and go straight into a browser, and we'll go to the Full Sail website live, and we'll just uh, you know work right on the site, and you'll see exactly what I'm doing. Um, this system is uh, Zoom. I'm sure that you've all heard of it by now. Uh, we just moved to Zoom in April, and at the time that we changed our contract, we had a we had a long term contract with some business conferencing software, which um, worked for us pretty good. But business and conferencing isn't quite the same as a classroom, and so we wanted something with a little more flexibility, a little more um, uh, fluidity about it and uh, we, we, we decided to try Zoom and it was right about that time that the world fell off a cliff and everybody had to stay home and suddenly Zoom was something everybody did and so we're still trying to figure out good the best uses of Zoom. Uh, the way this class is going to go we, we have our video cameras uh, we can turn them on but um, it's, it's a kind of a waste for this session. This session is information for you. And for those that can't make it, we're recording it. So we're hoping to get a good recording. So we, we keep the audio clean and uh, we're just showing uh, uh, slides here. Uh, I have my camera on, or I, I had my camera on. I think it was causing an echo because I uh, it was recording the audio twice, but um, uh, there's really no need for, for to run the webcams. Um, we, you can get everything you need by looking at my desktop and we have other ways of talking. Uh, there's a chat box, which uh, a lot of folks got, went to. I want, I want everybody to go down to the chat box right now and just type where you're at so we can see, uh, you know, what parts of the country we got covered here. I always find it interesting. These classes, uh, you know, pull from all over the country and sometimes around the world. And I see I have Ohio and North Carolina and Florida, California, Texas, Michigan, New Mexico, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Missouri, uh, a lot of M, a lot of M places, huh? Uh, Mississippi. So uh, that's cool. And um, uh, also know that uh, when I talk about things, I'm located in Winter Park, Florida. That's where Full Sail's campus is. And so I'm usually referencing things in uh, Eastern Standard Time, my time zone. 
And for a lot of you, you're going to have to translate that. So for instance, when I say 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, out in California, that's 3 p.m. because of the time zone difference. So um, you should also take that into account sometimes when you're looking at the, uh, the deadlines on the websites. If, the, um, if, if an assignment closes at midnight uh, in Florida, it closes at 9 p.m. in uh, California. So you just make those translations for yourself. Um, if you don't know what time zone you live in, I can't help you. But uh, you know, all you have to do is just kind of make the mental translations in your head. But uh, Zoom allows us to uh, have conversations. I, I, can, uh, I have people's mics muted for the most part now. I can unmute them, and you guys can unmute them yourselves. So um, uh, it's, it's easy to work with the system and uh, pass files along and, and switch desktops. And as you go into other classes, you're going to find more and more interesting uses of Zoom at, for each department. Um, you know, in the music department, they, they use it to set up so that they can watch people's fingers on the keyboards. And, you know, other people in our class, they might watch you drawing. So, you know, just the, the video camera allows us to be in the same space, even though we're remotely and we're trying as much as we can to evaporate that distance. Uh, you, you know, I know that it's um, safer, cheaper uh, to, to, to go to school from home, but it's also more isolating. And so we work against that tendency in everything we do. And we wanna really make it feel like a classroom with a real cohort. I want you guys to get to know each other. We're gonna have lots of opportunities for that. And that's what we're about. And that's how we're gonna to try to use Zoom as much as we can. So as I said before, my name's Daryl Moore. I've been at Full Sail for about 15 years. Uh, I've had a long and full career. I'm an actual gray beard. Uh, I've been in the, uh, the film and video industry. Um, I started out uh, writing books about movies at the time that uh, home video stores were just popping up. And then I transitioned into producing for original content for home video um, in, in the late 80s. And that meant that I was producing video on as low a budget as I possibly could. And that's where I got into computer graphics. I started working with Macintoshes uh, in, in the mid 80s and working with uh, video graphics and computer graphics. And um, I was actually involved in the development of uh, After Effects, which was called COSA back in 1991. And um, in the early 90s, I was one of the few guys that knew how to make video graphics. So I ended up teaching it in Columbia College in Chicago. Uh, I worked out of Chicago for about 30 years, freelance, did a lot of uh, work with different companies. Uh, as a freelancer, I worked with a lot of great organizations and I got involved right around the turn of the century with what was called distance learning at that point, not online learning. Um, and at that point, uh, schools couldn't really afford it but uh, expensive corporations could. Uh, and I started doing a lot of work for lawyers and um, pharmaceutical companies because uh, both of those are organizations that are highly regulated and they have expensive employees who need to be trained and therefore they could afford to pay for the training. And I got an early start doing online education around uh, 1997, 1998. And uh, was working there and, and somewhere around 2006, I got a call from Full Sail to come down here and I was been teaching digital video for about 10 or 12 years. And then, uh, about three or four years ago, I moved over into the creative presentation department. And uh, to me, it's the same thing. It's all storytelling. It's using uh, media and, and, and technology and drama to tell stories. And so that's what we're gonna learn about this month. We're going to learn to express ourselves. We're going to use uh, technology that you already have at your fingertips. Uh, you guys are a media generation. Um, you know what you do every day in and out with uh, TikTok and, and Instagram uh, beats the hell out of the most advanced multimedia we were doing back in the '90s. So uh, I know you guys are a very savvy group, and and I can uh, easily guide you into the kinds of content that we're gonna be dealing with. Um, I really like being with students. I really like answering questions and I like making myself available. Uh, I have listed somewhere my office hours. 
I don't even really remember what they are, but you can sort of throw them out the window and just assume that you can get me almost any time. Now, I'm not an ATM machine. I'm not available 24-7. If you call me at 3.30 in the morning, I, I may not answer the phone. But uh, I am very, very happy to answer your questions. And to that end, I'm happy to give you my personal cell phone number so you can enter it and text me at any time. Uh, I'm pretty good at answering messages that are on the FSO system. I might get back to you within a half hour or an hour, uh, but sometimes you want an answer right away. And if, if that, that's the case, feel free to text me. I've got my phone with me all the time. And for the most part, even if I'm doing something else, it's pretty easy for me to see a text real quick and respond and uh, get both of us on our way. So I'm happy to do that service and uh, you, uh, you can call me if you like as well. Sometimes it's easier to talk that out. But uh, uh, if I refuse, if I, if I don't pick up, I'm busy, but you can try anytime. I don't want to limit myself to office hours. Just uh, I'm somebody that's available to you. And uh, I know that all of you are uh, going all kinds of different schedules. Some of you work two shifts, some of you are raising kids and you're working, you, you're doing your homework after the kids go to bed and you're up at all times and so am I. So uh, whenever I can be available to you, I want to be. Uh, just uh, uh, we'll work it out. So uh, that's who I am. I want to find out who you guys are now. So this is the fun part for me. Um, I'm just going to go down the row. And I think you guys can unmute yourself. If you're not, uh, I can do it for you. But um, as I call on you, uh, I want you to answer, introduce yourself to everybody and answer four questions. Now, this isn't a you know, pop quiz. I'm not trying to play gotcha. I'm going to tell you what the four questions are. But in 15 seconds, when I call on you, I want you to tell me what's your name, where you're from, what are you here studying? Because all of you are in different disciplines. Everyone who comes to Full Sail takes creative presentation as their very first class. So you may be destined for different um, uh, degree programs, but for now you're all mixed in together. And that's a good thing. This is a, uh, this is a unique opportunity for, for you to network and meet people in other disciplines who you can become uh, lifelong friends and, and uh, colleagues with. And finally, uh, after you tell me what you're here to study, give me two words that describe your professional vision. So it's just the sort of literary Rorschach test. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Josh Garcia, uh, you're first up. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, I'm good. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, my name is Joshua Garcia. Um, I am actually from Brooklyn, New York, but I moved down to Las Cruces, New Mexico about a year and a half ago. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a change. Uh, it's actually a lot of a change because it's a, such a small, small city over here. Um, but I am actually studying uh, sports casting, uh, bachelor's of science. I believe that's the full title of it. Um, so I am doing that to try to get back into the NBA field. I worked with the NBA about a couple of years ago uh, doing acrobatic dunking. So I want to try to get back into that whole field uh, with the whole behind the scenes and stage work and things like that for the NBA. Uh, two words that describe my professional vision, I would say excited entertainment. Excellent. Um, yeah. Thanks. That was a great introduction. Although you blew that whole 15 seconds thing. <laughs> uh, Mike. And yeah, so uh, my name's Michael Kardonik. I'm from Toms River, New Jersey. I'm studying uh, audio engineering. I'm actually from the town Jersey Shore was filmed in. Uh, and my professional vision, I would definitely say musical creativity. I definitely have totally been musically inclined and working with a lot of people. So I just want to bring out their creativity. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, the person connected by phone with the 6099 phone number. Uh, 609, that, that's me, Mike. So <laughs> but, um, but I'm sitting on my computer right now. So I don't know why it's saying I'm connected by phone. Hmm. 
Well, he keeps sitting on that computer. Maybe it'll hatch. Uh, yeah. Elise. Elise Rose. Hi. Uh, well, my, that's my name, Elise Rose. I'm originally from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. I'm currently living in Delano, Tennessee. I am studying game design. Two words to describe my professional vision, innovative storytelling. Excellent choice, thanks. Brian Cox. Yeah, so uh, Brian Cox, my name. I'm from Highlandville, Missouri. Uh, it's near Springfield. It's probably something you can relate to more. Uh, I'm studying audio production. I have a bunch of friends in the field and I feel like I could really add to what they have. And two words that describe my professional vision have to be evolution defined. Wow. Nice choice. Thank uh, you. Daniel Atwood. As he said, my name's Daniel Atwood. I'm from Oregon originally. I'm in Texas now. I'm studying game design. And two words that describe my professional vision would have to be communicative gameplay. Cool. You guys are really nailing this two-word thing. Uh, Jacob Izalde. And tell me if I messed that up. No, you got it perfect. So my name is Jacob. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I'm studying audio engineering. Two words that would describe my professional vision would be... I would say just uh, I would say creative and uh, creative music. That's it. Okay, cool. Uh, Jesse, uh, Kelsey Bennett. Night. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. Sorry. Um, my name is Kelsey, and I'm originally from a little beach town called San Clemente, California. I'm currently going to be studying uh, graphic design. Uh, two words to describe professional vision. Um, I would say maybe creative um, image manipulation. I know that's technically three, but <laughs> right. I like. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Uh -huh. uh, Lauren Harkins. Lauren, are you there? Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, you sound good. Perfect. So my name is Lauren Harkins. I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. I'm originally from the suburbs of Detroit. I'm studying web design and development. And two words that describe my professional vision would probably be innovative and fulfilling. Excellent. Uh, Michael A. Flynn or Michaela Flynn? It's Michaela. Uh, so my name is Michaela Flynn. I'm from North Carolina. I'm studying digital cinematography. And two words that describe my professional vision would be story driven. Cool. Well, you guys are right on target here. Uh, Nikki as a guest. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my um, name is actually Nick Ayala um, Sumner. I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, I'm studying in music production and two words. I honestly don't know two words, so I'm kind of lost on that last question. Oh, you know two words. Um, That's fine. I don't want to catch you up, but uh, you're going to kick yourself when, you, when, you, when it comes to you later. Yeah. Uh, Orlando Cruz. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. My name is Orlando Cruz. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. Um, live in Ohio. I'm studying. I'm mean, studying um, audio production. And two words to describe describe me describe me is ambitious and driven. I'm a go getter. Excellent. Uh, Paul Savinov. Hey, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, my name is Paul. Uh, I was originally born in Philly, and I grew up in suburbs of Detroit, too, like someone else said. I'm studying audio production and two words, a uh, lyrical assassin. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's a Bob Seger song, isn't it? Could be. Um, uh, Jermaine Smith. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. So my name is Jermaine Smith. Um, I'm from Denolan, Florida, studying cybersecurity. Uh, I've been trying to think of two words. I guess, uh, innovative, innovative and uh, creativity would be my professional drip, uh, vision. Excellent. Uh, Stephen Dillard. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Uh, my name's Stephen Dillard. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm studying game development. And two words to describe my uh, professional vision. Um, creative gameplay. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, if I missed anybody, type your name in the chat box and I'll call on you. I, I, the, the list jumps around, so I'm not sure I got to everyone. Uh, anybody want to say hi that I, I, I skipped over? Jonathan Taylor, floor is yours. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, my name is Jonathan Taylor. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, where I currently reside. I'm studying music business, uh, getting a bachelor's degree. Uh, and two words that describe my professional vision um, is I like to have fun and I like to do everything with high quality. Excellent. And you described full cell right there. High quality fun. Thanks. Uh, and Raymond Gresham. Raymond, are you there? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. My name is Raymond Gresham, and I'm a hardcore gamer from Massachusetts. And I'm honestly in this class to try to get better at making the world, make the world better at video games. You know, everything better, revolutionize the world. Excellent. All right, well, thanks everybody, that was cool. Um, so what do we expect from you guys? Well, this is a month one class and you haven't been given your software or your laptop yet. So we're not expecting you to be fully polished. This is a class about efforts and ideas. And that's what we expect. We expect you to, to step up and try. And uh, we've designed this class so that it can work on uh, existing internet gear that you have. Now you have to have an internet connection and you have to have some device that uh, is on the internet and capable of making multimedia. So you can do this class on your phone. You can do this class on, on a laptop or a, a tablet, but uh, um, we're not requiring any specific software. We're going to point you to the software we can use. And uh, what we really want is you just step up and engage and just talk with us, talk with your classmates, uh, put forth efforts, we're going to take you out of your comfort zone, but we want you to try. And um, we also know that as online students, it's especially tough to get your regular study habits going. Uh, your, whole, your life is really coming at you all the time. Your boss will ask you to work overtime. We're about to come into Christmas season, so there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, maybe your kids get sick and you got to take them to the hospital. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are going to happen that are going to knock you off schedule. And we also had the craziest weather in the last five years that I've ever seen. There are fires in California and hurricanes in Florida and blizzards across the Midwest and tornadoes and uh, who knows what all. So that'll knock your power out. That'll knock your internet out. If you know that you're going to be experiencing difficulties, get a hold of us ahead of time. Uh, we love that. Uh, it makes you seem proactive. We will, if something happens to you and you can't make a deadline and you tell us after the fact, we of course will believe you, but it also seems after the fact. If there's something that you can predict that's happening and let us know, then we can work with your schedule and we can go ahead and give you extensions and, 
and move things around. It helps us to be able to tailor the schedule to you because I know all of you are working, you know, different times of day. You know, we've, we've intentionally made the assignments um, uh, our weekly schedule is set up so that if you're busy during the weekend, then you can front load it and get the work done ahead of time. If you're working during the week, then maybe you can try to get it done um, on the weekend. Uh, it is not possible to only do this on the weekend. You're going to have to check in. You're going to have to, there are going to be things that aren't announced or things that are posted throughout the week. So I am expecting you guys to at least check into the website every day. You don't necessarily have to be working or spending so many hours of study, but figuring out how to protect your study time is, is something that, that's really rough. We know that it takes eight weeks of doing something to form a habit. And our class is only four weeks long. So there's no way for you to have your study habits in place just this month. And as soon as you start to try to have a study habit, something's going to happen and, and knock you off course. So just stay in touch with us, work with us, and we will do our best to, uh, to try to keep you on course and try to start that, that crucial path of, of setting up a study habit that you can keep up with. Uh, as an online student, it is so important that you stay in touch, that you reach out, that you ask questions, and take advantage of the other students. You know, you're not in the same room, but you're just an internet away. So if you start to make friends and work with people, uh, there are forums that we're setting up that you can work together. Um, I've set up a Discord group, and a lot of times people like to work together at that. People who have struggled with the reading can go in there and find and commiserate with others and get through the reading. Uh, people who have questions about different things can ask uh, on the boards. So um, I'm here. There's other help at Full Sail, but you're also going to be able to find that uh, the other students going through exactly what you're going through are one of the best resources you can use and you need to um, step up and take advantage of them. Now, what should you expect from me? Well, don't expect me to hand, hold your hand all the way. Uh, Full Sail is designed around problem-based learning. We're gonna give you an interesting task and you have to figure out how to get it done. So we're not gonna lead you cookie cutter through this, but we will provide answers, we will provide pathways, we will coach we will offer options. We will be there all the way if you're struggling. We just won't do the work for you and we won't like put it into a, a simple recipe. Uh, all of this is about problem solving. All of this is about self-improvement. And so we wanna see you struggling with that blank page. This is what creative artists do. Uh, so we expect you to stay in touch with us. We expect you to let us know uh, how, when you're struggling and ask for help. We can't read your face from, from over the internet, know that you're struggling. So you've got to step up and ask. Uh, you have a right to um, expect timely grading from us. And I will in, endeavor to get you feedback on your assignments when you turn them in on a Sunday night by Monday or Tuesday uh, of that week so that you can go forward. The work you do in one week is, um, preparatory for the work you do the following week. So it is important to know how you're doing uh, on the assignment so that you can go forward. Uh, we're actually gonna do one major project this week, this month. Uh, we're gonna look at a bunch of presentations this week, so we're not gonna make one. We're gonna announce the, the assignment next week and you're gonna do the planning phase for it. So you won't be making the presentation next week, but you'll actually start planning it out. And in week three, you're gonna create the presentation. And in week four, you're gonna revise it based on feedback. So everything is uh, sort of scaffolded on top of everything else. And therefore it's important that you get your grades back in time to know that you're on the right track and know that you can go forward. So uh, that's on me. And if you're not getting your grade back in a timely fashion, call me up, ask me why, because that's my job for you. Um, one of the things you probably clicked through in the, the early introductory stuff uh, this morning was a page called Professionalism. And I don't know that you really noticed how it worked, but 
professionalism is in a full 10% of your grade. So uh, on that page, I think they link you to the student manual and you just say, yeah, I've seen this and so forth. By clicking that, you've earned those points. That's 10% of your grade. You're gonna get 100% for professionalism. However, the way we work here at Full Sail and professionalism is a 10% component of every single class here at Full Sail. This is what we call the global professionalism system. Is that any time we see you acting less than professional, we will note that on this score. So if you miss a deadline, if you're late, if you're rude to people in um, uh, a, a discussion group, if you say you're gonna do something and you don't do it, those are all things that would count against you as an employee and therefore they'll count against you as a student. We're gonna treat you like working professionals. For the next 30 months, we're going to give you the respect that you're due as a creative artist. And we expect you to do the same for your cohorts, your classmates. We expect you to treat everyone with respect and uh, be helpful and enthusiastic to them. And by acting like working professionals, you'll find that it goes a long way towards making you someone who's ready for the working world. Full Sail turns out people not, who not only know the software, know the gear, but they know the job. And they show up early, they show up on time, they deliver, they, they're the kind of employees that people wanna hire. And our professionalism component is a huge part of that. So I don't need to dwell on it today, but know that that is just part of what you're coming here to school for. It's not a lot of yelling in Martinism, uh, Martinism. It's just being responsible, being a professional and learning what that is and respecting it and respecting it in others. Um, this class is based on uh, readings from two books and the books are going to be provided for you from a service that Full Sail um, connects to. It's called O'Reilly Books. And so um, you have a subscription to this website, O'Reilly Books. O'Reilly Books is a, a sort of professional library. They have about 100,000 books dedicated purely to the creative arts, photography, filmmaking, audio production, web design, um, anything that has to do with media arts. Uh, and so they have this enormous book collection and every single one of those books is available to you. And all of the textbooks that we will use it here at Full Sail will come out of that repository. And you have access to them via your school credentials. So uh, as a separate website, you should be able to click on links and go straight in. Now, we've had a few issues with this in the last month or two. So if you do have any trouble accessing the books, we're gonna make the books available to you directly as PDFs on the website so that uh, none of that uh, is, a, is a problem. But for the most part, I want you to, to go to the O'Reilly website and log in and, and get those books. And if you're having trouble, let us know. And uh, tech support will, will make sure your, your credentials are all set up correctly and everything's working the way it should. But these two books, Resonate and Slideology, are about creating slides. They're written by the same person, Nancy Duarte. Nancy Duarte is a creative artist, creative director, and she went to an awful lot of business meetings, the same as many of us did uh, in the, the 90s and the 2000s. And all of the meetings she was in was, within other, was with other creative people. They were with artists, they were with illustrators, they were with uh, creative directors, people that she knew to be highly original. And yet it seemed like to her that every time she was in a business meeting, somebody would open up their laptop and they'd open up PowerPoint and be going through a boring PowerPoint slide show that was just poorly put together. And, uh, you know, she thought, well, maybe that's the way, you know, insurance regulators should run a meeting, but creative artists should have to do something better. So she wrote the book called Slideology, which is a design guide for creating really interesting and exciting slides for presentations. 
And that book was a huge hit. And it was such a hit that she realized that in publishing it, she'd only told half the story. She talked about how to make slides, but she hadn't talked about the rest of what needs to go into making a presentation. And so that's when she turned around and she wrote Resonate. Resonate is the second book that she wrote, but it's the first book that you need to read because it talks about the process of making a creative presentation. And um, the reason, uh, you're gonna hear us talking about PowerPoint a lot. And uh, we're going to beat PowerPoint like a dog and we're gonna pet PowerPoint like a dog because it's fantastic software that gets used the wrong way. It's really not PowerPoint software, except Microsoft hasn't gone out of its way to correct anybody because they, they sell it so well. So uh, if, if people wanna buy it, they'll let people buy it and use it the wrong way as well as the right way. But uh, it's our job to tell people how to use it the right way. And the real trick here, the real reason that most PowerPoint sessions or, or uh, pr um, productions are awful is that people go to PowerPoint first. PowerPoint uh, as software is slide making software. That's all it does, it makes the slides. It doesn't make the presentation. And so if you go to PowerPoint first, if someone says you have to make a presentation and the first thing you do is open up PowerPoint, well, PowerPoint will show you a, a template selector. So you choose some backgrounds and fonts and color choices and whatnot. Once you select that, it puts you into slide one and you're staring at slide one and it says, feed me. So you just, you give into that pressure and you start putting stuff in there before you've ever thought about what is the whole presentation here. You should use PowerPoint last. PowerPoint is the tail end. Slides come after all the other work that's done in, power, in presentations. And that's the big secret. That's what we're gonna get you to, to work on here. I know a lot of you have done PowerPoints in high school and you've done the same crappy PowerPoints we're all talking about. Everybody uses PowerPoint the same way because that's the way the software seems to ask you to use it. Well, I'm asking you not to let the software run you around. I'm asking you to step in and be in charge of your own productions. Nancy is going to tell us what creative presentations can and cannot do. She's gonna show us the process of creating them and we're gonna do it in the right order in the right way. And you're gonna find that it makes a massive difference in the way that you use PowerPoint and the way that you present material to other people. And uh, this isn't a big secret. It's just, you have to break your old habit before you can learn a new habit. And so, uh, Nancy Duarte is very big on, on presentations. She just thinks this is something that we're all doing. And that's really why we've made it the very first class that you're taking here at Full Sail. Because in all the other classes that you have to do, when you have to express yourself, it's not gonna be that common that you're gonna write a paper. We don't live in a write a paper society anymore. We live in an express yourself through media society nowadays. So most of the classes that you're going to take from here on out, when they ask you to give you their thoughts, you're gonna do it in a media fashion rather than uh, writing a simple Word document. Now, that doesn't mean that no one's writing Word documents. We're gonna actually have several Word assignments this month here. And the first week's class is a Word assignment, uh, the first week's main uh, assignment is a word assignment and not a, a presentation assignment. But for the most part, in the working world, as you go out and, and use the skills that you have in all, whatever industry you're going to be in, you're going to be asked to make presentations more than you're going to be asked to write papers. And the industry works that way. Whenever there's a problem, they get f six or eight or 10 people in a room, they schedule a conference room, they put an hour's worth of time on, on the books and they are expected to solve that problem in an hour and, and keep going. That's the way the world works. We live in a very fast paced world nowadays. And that meeting in the conference room probably started with a PowerPoint presentation. And it needs to be short. A good PowerPoint presentation is short and brief 
it clarifies the setup. We don't use PowerPoint to show off. We don't use PowerPoint to fill it full of crap. We use PowerPoint to, to make our ideas cut to the bone. So you start off a meeting with a, power, a short PowerPoint presentation that clarifies all the issues. And hopefully, you know, it's only five or six minutes long, maybe less, maybe more. And at the end, you're prepared for a lively discussion of the issues that have been laid out and you can go forward. That's the point of presentations. They clarify issues, they spread ideas. And therefore, if you're not using them in such a way that you're making other people uh, understand those things, then you aren't doing your presentations the right way either. But whatever industry you're in, whether you're in the audio industry or the video game industry or graphic design, even sports casting, you're going to have meetings with other people where you have to solve problems. And in order to explain yourself, in order to express your ideas, you're going to need media to do it. And presentations are, are the, the go-to way to get that done. And so we've been seeing presentations everywhere. Uh, and for the most part, we find them boring. People just do it terribly. And uh, it often ends up being someone has written their entire script and put the words of that script into the slides. And instead of looking at you and facing you and talking to you, they're just reading the slides as if you can't see the slides yourself. And that just becomes a very uh, hollow, boring experience. And that puts people to sleep. And the slides move from fact to fact. They don't tell us what we need to know. They tell us inf inf information. They don't connect it for us. But facts alone don't make an engaging presentation. This is the most important part. This is the big thing that we're going to be learning this month, is that in order to get your ideas across to people, you can't just list information. You, just, you can't just give facts. You've got to turn those facts into a story and make it dramatic. You've got to give people media and drama for them to remember. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. Anything that you want to say can be put in the form of a story. What is the form of story? Why is storytelling more effective than simply reporting? Well, uh, we've done uh, studies about it and literally humankind has been doing this for 100,000 years. The first presentations were cavemen standing around the fire explaining important, very important information to the rest of the clan. And if you didn't get it right, if you bored them to death, then they didn't know the things that they needed to survive. So you had to be a good storyteller. You had to be someone that was going to get the correct information across. 100,000 years ago, um, we would stand around a campfire and talk about the, the dangers that were inherent, the things that we had to know. And we had to have a good storyteller in order to be able to put that across in people's minds. And the good storytelling involves media and drama. And therefore people remember it. If you, if you gave them a boring story about horrible beings that will kill you, you might not remember it. So it's got to be an exciting story about horrible beings that will kill you. So you're never going to forget. We've studied the way that people retain information. And if you just give people facts, if you give them uh, boring PowerPoint slides that don't match up, that information will lodge in the brain, but people won't be able to recall it because they lodge in different parts of the brain that you don't reassociate. But if you tell them this information in the context of a story, if you add media and drama, then it's gonna register in different parts of the brain and people will be able to recall it easily because of the different areas that it's been mapped to. So you need that extra drama of storytelling in order for people to be able to remember what they've told you. So what do we need to tell a story? Well, it's very simple. Uh, you guys already know this really. 
You need a beginning, middle, and end. You need to lay out information in such a way that it moves from point to point. The beginning is the way things are. It's a lay of the land. It's the, this is how we are when it starts. The middle is the complication. Um, you know, we're not talking necessarily about drama here. We're talking about all things. So this could be as simple as, do we need to order more pencils for the office? If you're gonna have a discussion, put it in the form that people are gonna be able to remember, make sure that there is memorable information involved in it, and put it in the beginning, middle, and end. The beginning, lay out the situation. The middle, lay out the complications. What are the issues involved? What, what, are the, what are the options or the choices? And in the end, what is the most viable solution? What is the takeaway? Where are we headed? And any story that you tell that's laid out in these formats can enlighten your audience and set you up for a fruitful discussion. You can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be with fiction. It can be with regular nuts and bolts conversations. Another thing that Nancy is going to show us uh, is her idea of what really makes for memorable um, impacting slides. You can have slides of text only. You can have slides of image only. Those will work very well sometimes in context. But there's a combination of the two in which she says quote image. This is, quote isn't necessarily a famous quote from so-and-so. It can just be a headline. It can just be a short sentence that clarifies. But a bit of text that gives context to the image, an image that gives context to the text. They feed each other and they make sense because what you're trying to do is to be more specific to the audience. I want to give you uh, an example here. Uh, here's a quote about education from Socrates. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. Now, it couldn't be more raw here. I haven't given you any way to interpret this. It's just black text on a white background. Nice contrast, but there's no image here that colors the text for you to think about it in any particular way. The only additional information I've given you is the source of the quote, Socrates. So he's a Greek philosopher who lived 3,000 years ago. You may or may not know who he is. If you know who he is, then you know the quote is old and you may be thinking, well, this is about education through the ages, but it doesn't have to be. This quote isn't necessarily something that's long and lofty. This is a quote that is able to be interpreted in different ways. So if I wanted you to think about modern education and the urgency of current issues of the crisis of modern education, I might couple this quote with a photograph of third world kids teaching themselves under an underpass. And now you've got a sense of the now, you've got a sense of the modern world of, of urgency, of uh, need. This, edu this quote now deals with current tense because the combination of the image and the quote, I have colored your thinking about this quote. When you were just looking at this text on a, on a background, you could take any interpretation you want, but now you have to, incorporate the image and I am forcing you to make a particular interpretation. That's my job as an artist. That's going to be your job as an artist. Not only are you wanting them to understand the quote, but you're going to combine it with imagery that makes them understand it in the way that you want. What if this urgency of modern education wasn't what I was intending? What if I did want to think of lofty education through the ages notions? Well, I might go to a Renaissance painting of Socrates and, you know, uh, horn in on the fact that this is ancient Greek wisdom. And now the combination of this painting and the quote does make you think of education through the ages rather than modern urgency, because the image has forced you to um, reflect on the meaning of the word. And a lot of what we're going to do is to try to reach our audience. You're going to hear many, many times through this month that 
one of the most important things that you can do in creating a presentation is to know who your audience is because you don't make generic presentations. Every presentation you make is for a specific audience and you have to take what their needs are into account. That should be your number one driving force because you're, you're meant to persuade. You can't persuade a blank wall. You have to know who you're talking to. So your, your particular tastes, intellectual interests, uh, references matter. And those are the audience. And if you know what the audience is and you want to connect to that audience, one of the things you want to do is make cultural references that connect to the audience. So I'm guessing that my audience here isn't too much up on Socrates. So this is not the right way to connect to you guys. And if I want to figure out something that's in this quote that's going to connect to you, you know, I'm going to think to myself, well, how do you guys know anything about Socrates? Well, if you know anything, you guys being pop culture dudes, you know him as the character Socrates in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So I might take a clip from that movie and I'll put that in there and it'll be an in-joke between you and I because we have a common cultural reference. Now, I have to think this through. You guys are all 19 years old and this is a movie from the 90s. Is this movie too old for you? Have you never seen it? Well, Netflix has brought it back around. Keanu Reeves has brought it back around. Keanu Reeves just made a remake of it. So it is a relevant reference. And so I have to be thinking about these things because I have to understand who is my audience. Um, if this was an audience full of dentists, this might not be the right reference for them. You have to understand what your audience is about and you have to bring to them the references that matter. It may be that this audience doesn't watch movies, that you all play video games. So I might need a, a clip from a video game uh, instead of a clip from a movie in order to make a, an appropriate connection to my audience. But only if you know who your audience is can you start to think creatively about what are the references that are gonna connect to them. And that's a creative act. That's what makes this a really interesting problem because you aren't just illustrating the presentation. You're choosing the most appropriate image to put forth and persuade. You have to enlighten what's being said. You have to connect with the audience. And you need, to need, you need to know that information ahead of time before you can do it. So this is all about storytelling. You guys have probably heard you know, uh, the, the theories of storytelling. It's the journey of the hero. You guys are, uh, you know, this is, this is what storytelling is all about. And you might think that if you're standing in front of an audience, presenting your information to them, that you're the hero. But what you have to realize is in this setup, you are actually the movie and the audience is the hero. If you're doing this right, the audience is listening to your words, they're looking at your slides and they're imagining themselves going through whatever trials and tribulations you're talking about in your story. Whatever you're talking about, they're imagining it happening to them. So it's part of your job as a speaker to use action verbs so the audience can more forcefully imagine themselves doing things. It's part of your job to use imagery that helps them connect with the connect material and again, imagine themselves as the hero. And then the storytelling um, lore, there is a, an actual name for the person that takes the hero, initiates the hero on his journey and that is mentor. So the audience is in storytelling and creative presentations, the audience is the hero and you are the mentor. You are the one that guides the hero on his journey. It's your job through your presentation, through the slides that you create, through your oratory as the speaker to get those people started on that journey, to think about what would I do if this happened to me? Or is this what I want to think about? And so your job as the mentor is to get the audience engaged, is to get them started on that journey. And they will go from the beginning to the middle to the end. And if you've designed your story right, the takeaway at the end is gonna lead that audience right to 
the point of perception that you want them to have. And that is a masterful job. And that's what we're gonna to learn to do. We're gonna take people on these journeys. We're gonna design the journeys from the very beginning, which means we're gonna figure out all this stuff ahead of time before we ever open PowerPoint. And when we figured it all out, then we'll open a PowerPoint and we'll make some terrific slides and we'll sync it all together. So that's what we're learning to do this month. That's what we're doing this month. And um, we have two assignments this week to get you started. The first one is the discussion in which we're gonna ask you to talk about your, your previous experience or your history with this fish, uh, uh, presentations. And the main assignment is for you to see a bunch of really good presentations. So I'm gonna talk about that right now. I'm gonna dump out of the slides real quick and um, get to the browser here. And uh, before I, I go in here, uh, I want to uh, see if there are any questions. I know I talked a lot. I, sometimes I talk pretty fast. If someone asked a question in, in the chat box, I, I apologize if I missed it, but uh, do, do we have any questions yet? I don't think I've lost anybody yet. I, haven't, haven't I did have one question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, it's Brian Cox. Um, my question was, are we going to learn how to judge our audience? Because sometimes I know we don't know our audience before we come into a situation. So Absolutely. that's that's really the crux of, of next week is pre-production is really about research. If you don't know who your audience is, you have to find out. You know, a lot of students just feel like they want to invent the audience for themselves and then give them a presentation. In the real world, there are actual people you're going to have to talk to and you're going to have to know how to get a hold of them. Uh, for instance, the most practical example would be, let's say you were at a, a video game company and the video game company needed to figure out what they were going to do for level 42 of the game. And is it going to end up at the waterfall or is it going to end up at the, at the, the volcano? And so they schedule a, a one hour meeting in the conference room and it, and they have particular people in that meeting for a reason. There's going to be the project manager because she's caring about the schedule and there's going to be the finance guy because he's in charge of the money and there's going to be the chief programmer because he's managing the programmers and he wants it to look cool. And there's going to be the, the lead designer or the artist because he wants to, uh, you know, either create new characters or, or, or make the characters he's, he's got look great. And each one of them has their own agenda and you have to know that. And if you're leading this meeting and you're making that pre uh, presentation, you want to talk about should this level go here or should this level go there? you know that in your speech, you have to address the concerns of each one of those individual members. It's gonna cost this much. It's gonna look this cool. It's gonna get done this fast. Each one of your audience members has a particular concern and it's your job to know that those people are in those rooms and they have those agendas. And if you don't, you aren't doing your work right. If I, I mean, so sometimes it's not possible to know everything. Sometimes you're going to go into rooms that are a little bit cold, but for the most part, you have the ability through advanced work to know who you're talking to. And it's your responsibility to know, do they have an agenda? Do they have a point of view? Do, are they looking for something? Are they receptive to these or ideas or this kind of input or artwork, et cetera. And that's all pre-production work that needs to be done. And it can't be fixed after you make the presentation. It has to be done before you ever start. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you for answering my question. That really clarifies everything. So in the next week, we'll learn how to judge our audience. Yeah, there, you know, it, 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 it's contextual always, but my my thing is I don't want everybody I don't want anybody to ever assume a generic audience. You, there there is a preposition that they have. You'll know something about them. They're all born in North America. They're all dentists. They're all video game lovers. They you know um, they all have certain preferences or certain uh, distinctions, and you're going to be able to use that as 
uh, a guide to ways to reach them. And those are the things that we're going to learn. That was a great question. Anybody else? Uh, all right. Well, I'm looking here at week one, as we see, uh, you guys uh, probably already got through this first material here. Uh, this is week one. Week two, like I said, is planning a presentation. Week three is the first draft of the main presentation that you're doing. And week four is creating version 2.0 of it based on feedback. So we're here in week one. And uh, the, sorry about that. Uh, this is where you signed up for the lecture. And those of you that aren't able to make it, I'm recording this lecture. So it's gonna be uh, actually turned into a, um, a video on YouTube and posted right here. So we're right here where it says video record, lecture recording. About an hour after the lecture is over, you're gonna have a video of the entire thing here and you'll have all week to look at it. So even those of you that are here live, maybe you were planning to take notes and you forgot or, or I don't really want you to take notes because you, know, you can come back and you can review the video all you like. So uh, when I get into the main assignment, you know, uh, there might be something that you'll have questions about. You can always just come back and you can jump around the recording so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But, uh, you know, you can, you can find exactly what you, uh, you need to, to uh, learn about the assignments and the homework. The, the uh, recording of the Zoom lecture usually goes up by nine o'clock on Monday and it's up for the rest of the week and you've got until Monday or until, until Sunday night to watch it. So if you, if you couldn't attend live, you have that option to come back and watch it later. The, uh, the reading is here and the links to get you into uh, the uh, O'Reilly bookstore is here. So here we see Resonate and anybody who's having trouble linking through, uh, you can see right here, it's asking me to sign in. So it, it didn't read my credentials right there. That's one of the issues that we're having with this. So if you find that you're having trouble getting a hold of the book, we've, we've made it as a download that you can, you can watch it, read it offline here. But we're asking you to read chapters one, two, three, four, and seven from Resonate this week. So today, tomorrow, Wednesday are the best days to get that done. You're going to find that you need the reading uh, under your belt in order to do the, the week's 1.4 assignment. Uh, the discussion board, it doesn't matter. But somewhere in the front part of the week, try to get the reading done ahead of time before you start working in on the 1.4 and therefore that reading will become uh, your sort of vocabulary for doing that week 1.4 assignment. Uh, 1.3 is a discussion and we're asking you to do uh, two things. An initial post, which is uh, something that's one or two paragraphs long in which you tell us some of the following information about your experience with presentations, whether you're, you're uh, uh, comfortable giving them or you have stage fright or you've ever had a bad experience. Uh, you know, uh, are you familiar with particular software? Are you interested in learning different software? You don't have to answer all of these questions, but these are prompts that can help you find something that you want to talk about. But we want you to give a substantial initial response telling us who you are. And you can do that response on the very first page here. But if you want to look and see what the other students have written, you can go straight to the discussion. And you can see I've written uh, something here to start off with. And we already have some students that have already started to put in uh, nice responses, et cetera. And you can, when you're on this page, you can do that initial post up here. If you post into the box at the top, then when you hit post, your name and photo ID will be next to the image and therefore it's identified as you and people will know that you wrote it. We're also asking that after you've done that and we ask you to do this by Wednesday night. If you can't get it done by Wednesday night, it's okay. You'll, you can still do it later in the week, but we're hoping that most of you get it done by Wednesday night, get it out of the way. And also if it's up by Wednesday, then you can come back and read everybody else's post because 
The second part of the assignment is that you need to respond to two or more classmates. So we want you to read other people's responses and respond back to them. And we're looking for what we call a substantial response, which is more than, hey, great post, nice to meet you. We want you to engage in what people have said. And you can respond by hitting the reply button beneath each one, each person's uh, initial, uh, make initial post. So if you hit reply and type, then that will become a reply to that assignment. And you have um, a requirement to do one initial post and two responses. Now we like to see you do more than two responses, but if, if you're interesting, if you're wanting to know what we mean by substantial responses, we have something here we call the RISE model. RISE uh, is an acronym that stands for reflect, inquire, suggest, and elevate. And as it moves up in level, it moves up in depth of thought. So a reflection is talking back about what someone said. And inquiring is asking questions, furthering the development, saying, you know, oh, uh, you said you knew this software. Can you tell me how it does X, Y, and Z? A suggestion is for you to be engaged on the level in which they talk. Uh, you know, they like this, you like that. You're, you're actually having a, a discussion or a debate. And an elevate is you're asking, you know, profound questions that, that, that make all of us smarter. Now we don't expect you to do all of this, but this is a model for the way a good education uh, discussion post goes. You know, a, a, a lot of what we have to do in online education involves the discussion board and you need to treat the discussion board seriously. Uh, this isn't like texting in which you wanna get out with as few words as possible. Um, but you're also not trying to just go by word count. You're trying to engage in quality thought. And so what we're looking for are some, what I call substantial replies. And that doesn't mean that it's 400 words long. A substantial reply doesn't have to be a lot of words, but it has to be a lot of thought. It has to be, you read what they, they said and you engaged in it. And that's what we're looking for everybody. So initial post by Wednesday, and uh, response posts by Sunday night. So that's the discussion assignment. The main assignment uh, is called professional analysis, presentation analysis. And we're wanting you to watch a whole bunch of really great presentations and write about them. And so we're sending you to TED Talks. Now, most of you probably already know what TED Talks is. If you've never heard of TED Talks, TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. TED Talks is an organization that has been putting on conferences around the world for the last dozen years or more. And every time they do, they don't have one speaker who speaks for a long time, one giant keynote speaker. What they'll do is they'll have a conference for three or four days, and they'll maybe schedule 15 or 20 speakers who all speak in short, punchy, uh, well-formed presentations. Every TED Talk is 20 minutes or less. They're six to 20 minutes long. So they fit into what we're talking about uh, as a, a legitimate presentations here. Something that's short and organized and clarifying for the thought. And these are some of the best presentations that you've ever seen in the world. Some of the most interesting and outrageous ideas you've ever heard. So at this point, there are only 3,500 TED Talks to choose from. So this would be a great time to do a deep dive. If you've got a little bit of extra time in your schedule this week later on, uh, you know, don't just watch three, watch 15. It'll only make you smarter. But the instructions for this assignment are that you go to TED Talks and you find at least three that you wanna talk about. So in order, please, you know, humor me, in order to get the three that you wanna talk about, watch more than three. Uh, that's the way you really get things going here. Mike's raised his hand. You got a question, Mike? Hey, yeah. So I actually had a question. It doesn't really have to do with this. It has to do with the, uh, the lives and the Zooms. Um, sure. When I spoke to the enrollment department, they told me that lives and Zooms were based on the professor and it could be Mondays or Tuesdays. 
do we have like a set time every week or is it kind of you have to sign on to your portal and take a look the night before it might be at 4 p.m one week on a monday or it might be tuesday at six i should have mentioned this uh i'm the i'm the professor who makes that decision in this case and i'm okay. choosing to do it mondays at six every week sounds perfect so next the next one is next monday at six and only when there are things like a uh, labor day that you can't have school work on a monday or something like that that do i go off that schedule uh some teachers like to do it at, at different times like They'll do it later in the week after you've absorbed more of the material. Uh, I like to do them early in the week as a kind of launch, launch pad of the week. And then my video is up for the rest of the week and I just feel like, you know, um, anybody who comes in late can watch the video and get caught up. But if I wait too long, you might waste a day or two on an idea that is in the wrong direction when I could have easily steered you in the right direction. So my choice is to have uh, the live sessions uh, Monday night. Uh, I can't have them too early in the day or else we'd be disadvantaging the folks on the West Coast. So I choose arbitrarily six o'clock so that it's uh, not too early for the, the West Coast folks and not too late for um, guys on the East Coast. But it's my choice and, and it's going to be every week uh, at six o'clock on Mondays. Uh, next, next class you get in after this it'll be something completely different. Okay, definitely wanted to get that clarified for at least the first few weeks because, you know, we're all balancing work and life and <laughs> craziness, so. Absolutely. Uh, and if, if Monday night at six doesn't work for you, I apologize. I just, uh, I, I, I can move it around, but, you know, uh, the class moves so quickly that in order to take a poll, <laughs> we've lost time. So yeah, no, that, that sounds perfect. <laughs> um, okay, no problem. So uh, back to here, I'm asking you guys to watch these TED Talks and pick three. And then I want you to write reviews of the TED Talks. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. I don't want you to review the content of the TED Talk. You can choose anything you want, and the, the weirder, the more outrageous the topic, the more fun you can have. I, I encourage that. And you may have to talk a little bit about what was said in there, but I don't want you to review the content. I want you to review the presenter. I'm asking you to watch these TED Talks, and I want you to keep a particular eye on how well the presenter did his or her job. So when you write reviews, you're going to tell me, this presenter did a good job because of X. This presenter really didn't do a very good job because they failed to do X, Y, and Z. So if you liked their performance, tell me why. If you didn't like their performance, tell me why. Um, and the vocabulary that you will use to judge these presenters should come directly out of the reading that you do in Nancy Duarte, uh, chapters one through four and seven. So that's why it's a good idea to get the reading done ahead of time. Then you're fully versed in the vocabulary of what pre presenters do right, what presenters do wrong, and, and so forth. So I want you to write a two or three paragraph review of each TED Talk. I want you to identify the speaker. I want you to identify the name of the topic. I want you to answer most of these questions. Now, I don't want you to do it in question and answer format. I want you to synthesize your answers into two or three paragraphs. And if you don't get any one, every one of these questions answered, that's fine. These are prompts. For the most part, I simply need you to tell me how well did the presenter do his or her job and what were the things that stood out as a highlight. And in the course of that, you may have to tell me a little bit about what they were speaking about and how the audience reacted and so on and so forth. So step two, create a document. This is a writing assignment. I don't want you to use PowerPoint. I know a lot of people end up using PowerPoint even for writing assignments. And I'm not going to say that you can't, but I would prefer that you use Word. This is a writing assignment. Uh, and I want you to, to uh, use Word or some other uh, text document to do that. You have your choice of anything to use. So you're not, you're not um, limited to Microsoft products. 
uh, the reason I I'm keep talking about uh, 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 Word and PowerPoint is that uh, you have been given a brand new copy of Office 365 as part of your um, new student status as a student. Uh, your, your school email has entitled you to a four-year license to Microsoft Office 365, and the school is counting on you using Outlook as your email manager. But because you have a full license to uh, Office 365, you have the latest version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, uh, OneNote uh, available to you. you. You have it available online, and you have it available to install on your computer. Uh, and so I would like you to take advantage of that. Uh, but again, if you don't like using Word, you can use Google Docs, you can use text man, uh, you can use a text editor, you can use uh, Apple Pages, anything you want to write in is fine. Um, so we want you to write two or three paragraph reviews of each of the TED Talks. Make sure you identify the name of the speaker and the name of the, of the topic. And we also want you to add imagery to it. So even though this is a written document, I want you to add images and I'm, one, and I'm specifically wanting you to add images that help me understand what you've written. So I'm gonna be judging your images, not on how pretty you are, they are or how many you, images you stuck in there, but on whether they helped me understand what you've written. If you were to read a magazine article, it would be illustrated with images that help you understand the article better. So I want you to try to pick, pick images and these are mostly gonna be screenshots from the, uh, uh, the videos, but you can, get these vi you can get these images anywhere. Uh, you, you, you need to tell me where they came from. If you got them off the TED Talk site, just say images from TED Talk. If you got them from Google search, just say images from Google search. But acknowledge if you're using other people's photographs uh, that you did that. And the final part of the assignment, after you've done the three reviews, you've written them out, you've added images, I want you to give me a single comprehensive list of 10 qualities, techniques, and or presentation skills that made the presentations you watched inspiring, captivating, creative, and effective. Boy, that's a long sentence. Um, essentially, this list of 10 is comparing the three together. What did the people do consistently that was the same? Did they use humor? Did they use hand gestures? Did they look, speak directly to the audience? Did they use props? Whatever. Uh, you're going to, again, find that all of this comes out of the Nancy Duarte reading. So you shouldn't have trouble coming up with these things as long as you watch the videos. Um, the three individual reviews are individual reviews. The one list of 10 is comparing the three together. And if two of the three meet the criteria and the third doesn't, that's fine. You can still include it in your list of 10. So um, this is a grading rubric will tell you sort of what we're looking for in terms of completeness uh, and in judging uh, your, your assignment and so forth. Uh, you'll notice down here, we actually have given you a link to where you can download Office 365. Remember, you're not only having access to Office 365 online, which is there's online storage available to you and there are online tools that you can use in a web browser, but you also can download versions for any platform that you have. And one of the really great things about this license is that you're allowed to put it on any two devices at once. So if you've got a lap, if you've got a PC laptop right now, you can download the Windows version and put the latest version on that. And when you get a LaunchBox uh, computer from, micro, uh, from, from Full Sail in four months, you can put the Mac version on that. But note also that there are versions of Office 365 for Android phone and tablet or for iOS phone and tablet. So if you've got a phone, you can download it. If you've got a computer, whether it's Mac or PC, you can download it. So we, we highly recommend that you take advantage of that. Another cool thing is because of our accelerated education, Microsoft gives all college students a four-year license because they figure that's how long it takes to go through school. But you guys are gonna go through school faster than that. So you're gonna get a four-year license to my office 365 for free from Microsoft. 
this is a deal that Microsoft gives you. This isn't a deal that, that, that uh, um, Full Sail is paying for. But uh, they give you that license for a full four years. So you're gonna have a, pretty much a year and a half after you graduate that you still have access to the latest, greatest tools from Microsoft for free. So pretty good deal there. So um, we want you to create these papers. I wanna make sure that you're, uh, that nothing's a mystery here. So I'm happy to share examples of what I'm talking about here. So I have uh, papers from previous students that I'm happy to share with you guys. Uh, so here's Daniel uh, Nigan's uh, paper, and he gave me a nice illustration. This is a this is a screen grab right out of the video. Uh, this is something that may have come from the video or may have come from the website, but here he's illustrating the text. He's giving me two or three paragraph reviews, and in the end, here is a list of 10 qualities and he backs them up with instances. He says, you know, so it so does this here, etc. I don't want just 10 single words here. I mean, you'll, you'll get credit for that, but you won't get as many points. If you tell me how they uh, manifest themselves, then I'm very happy with the work that you do. But uh, there's no one set of rules for how they should look or how many images you should have. Um, you know, most people want to have at least one image per TED talk. Some people, I have examples here of uh, people uh, just thinking that, uh, you know, you really want to have a lot of images. If you do, that's fine. Uh, you don't get extra points for having extra images, but every single image that you publish, it needs to say, I'm adding meaning to what's been written. And so that's the judgment that you should make. And that's the judgment I will make of the images that you choose. So uh, you can turn this in as a Word document or a PDF. If you create it on anything and turn it into a PDF, that's always a really good way to turn stuff in. Once you've created the document and it's a desktop, it's a document on your desktop, on a Mac or a PC, as a computer uh, file, you can drag it to this completion box and it will upload. You'll actually see it, you know, upload across the web and give you a completion uh, guarantee or not. If you're working on your phone, this is something you need to kind of think about. There's no such thing as files on your desktop on the phone. When you work on the internet, then you're working through uh, the cloud. And for the most part, when you're accessing the um, Office 365 website to do your work, if you created a Word document with your phone, most likely it is a document that is stored on the net on that website. So there's no file to upload. There is a link that you can make to the file so that I can see it on the internet. So if you're, if you're doing your work on your phone, you may not be uploading a file for the final homework. You're uploading a link. You can do that in the feed box, feedback box. For every assignment, there's an individual feedback box. And if you type in here, I know that it's you. It's always identified. I mean, they never get mixed together. Each student's feedback is separate and it's contextual. So if you, do, if you type feedback in the 1.4 box, I know you're pretty much talking about the 1.4 assignment. But uh, that's also a way that you can turn in uh, assignments. Another way you might do it is create a text file that has a link to your assignment and then upload the text file. But again, same difference with a phone. It's hard to create actual files and do uh, I.O. Uh, the way you can with a Mac or a PC. So it's best just to send the link and make sure that you're sharing your files. So you have to make sure the sharing preferences on the websites are set up correctly so that when you send me a link, I can actually look at the document. Uh, most most uh, things like uh, Office 365 are set up for privacy. So when you create a document, it's private by default and you have to actually choose to make it public so other people can see it. That's a good thing, it, it protects your privacy, but it means that you have to learn how to change those permissions so that when you, you wanna share your work, you are letting other people see it. Uh, do we have any more questions here? 
Um, I mentioned Discord earlier. I, I put a link to Discord in the welcome message. I'm going to actually add it to the announcements as well. So if you want to, if you want to join uh, a Discord, um, the uh, the Discord section that I have is usually just helping people get together, and then you guys can go off and uh, you know uh, form your own group or, or or get through your studies any way you like. So it's just there as an aid to help people get together, but. Uh, it's a good way to, to, to get started uh, uh, networking with other people and getting to know them. Um, so do we have any more questions? You're understanding the process I want you to go. Yeah. Can you come here? You I know? just, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't, I just had uh, it wasn't really a question. I just wanted to say that Discord is a really good opportunity for networking and in this industry that most of us are moving forward in, that's a good tool to use. So I'd suggest using that to your advantage. Well, uh, it, it's certainly a great thing for all the video gamers. You know, if you're in audio engineering, there might be another group that, you know, works better. I mean, the, the, the networking on SoundCloud might be something there. So everything's industry specific, but for an awful lot of the video game folks, that's, you know, that's a really great resource and it work It works for everybody and it's uh, easy to use. And, um, uh, Sometimes it's just easier to, to have live direct chat than to go through the, the, the channels here. But anybody that wants to uh, uh, ask a question, uh, you, can, you can post feedback on any page. You can add feedback up here. Uh, so it's, it's directly at the top. Uh, and uh, you know, any, again, any messages that you guys send to me, uh, I'm, I'm scanning, I'm looking for them. I usually try to get back to you within half hour to an hour, but you know, sometimes it might be a half a day. You never know. Um, so anybody that wants uh, one of these um, samples of previous students work, uh, I don't like to send the same sample out to everybody uh, because the rule is going to be if I share the sample with you, you can't use the three TED talks that that student chose. Uh, fair enough. There are 3,500 TED Talks out there, but I don't want to permanently eliminate any particular TED Talk. So my, uh, my suggestion is each of you that wants uh, to see an example, send me a message. Uh, best thing to do is send, me, send it to me as a message, feedback message on uh, um, uh, FSO. Right here, type down here, just click in, type, please send me an example and I can mail it right back to you. If you text it to me, but I can text it to you back. If you, if you ask me on, on uh, Discord, it's a little harder for me to upload PDFs on Discord, but uh, I, can, I can make that happen. But anyway, I'm gonna give everybody different examples so that no particular TED Talks are completely blocked out. And uh, you know, it'll be up to you to, to you know, follow the uh, rule of, of not using the TED Talks that you have samples of. Um, all right. Well, I think that's everything I got. If nobody else has any questions, I'm going to let you guys know, go. Uh, I've been talking in a while and I, I don't like to keep you that long, but, um, stay tuned. There's going to be a special event on Friday for Halloween. And, uh, we may have some more fun happening this week. So, uh, keep an eye out for that night, everybody. Hey, I do have one more question really quick. Sure. Uh, how long do lectures usually go on for? Uh, weeks one and two, they're about an hour and a half. Uh, and weeks three and four, they're about an hour. All right. All right, uh, sweet. Thank you. All right. No problem. Anybody else? Last chance. I love to answer questions. You're only going to make me happier. And what's this, uh, what's this special event that's coming up? Oh, can't tell you. How, how do I hear about it on the portal? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to let you know later, but, uh, it's, 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 it's purely for fun. So what's happening this weekend. That's fun. You'll, you, you're, you're going to get there. All right. Check in often. I'll see you. <laughs> All right.